Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, looking around the room this morning, I see your disappointment that Brian isn't here. Um, I'm pinch hitting for him. He, he had uh, some other commitments, so, uh, so hopefully I can do as good a job as Brian does on the milling. Uh, before, we get done, uh, before we get started, a uh, little bit of background on me. I um, started with the department in 1989, out on a paving job, and uh, here I am 33 years later, still doing the same thing. Statewide, I'm the center, senior project manager in the highway program for our interstate system, where uh, my team estimates and puts together our bid books for our pavement preservation program on the interstate, as well as uh, a statewide construction manager that the uh, region project managers uh, will use for reference on other heavier type projects. Outside of DOT, I'm the current vice chair of ASHTO's Committee on Construction, and I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about um, a secondary role that I'm playing with uh, ASHTO. Uh, myself and John Hancock from Georgia is representing the COC on the Joint Technical Committee for Electronic Engineering Standards. And the reason why I bring that up is because yesterday and throughout this conference, you've actually heard about some of the technology that is out there. And the JTCEES uh, committee is trying to pull all that together and come up with a uh, comprehensive plan on what that does for us in the industry. So from design to construction to maintenance, and I would encourage you to take a look at some of our um, uh, webinars that we've created. Uh, there's a lot of great information out there about this, and uh, feel, free to join the, feel free to check out those webinars because I think there's some valuable information out there. So milling, Brian, uh, Brian was kind enough to give me a presentation this morning, and we're going to talk a little bit about a standard cut drum and a medium cut drum and what our experiences are and how we're using it in Maine. So really today what I'm going to talk about is the two different drums. We're not going to spend any time on the fine or micro cut. Uh, we're not really using it here in Maine, but we are using the standard cut, which is the 12 to 18 millimeter spacing. And we're also using the medium fine cut, which is the 8 to 10. Um, over time, we've started to use the medium and fine cut uh, a little bit more than we have in the past. And throughout the presentation, I'll kind of indicate why we're doing that. So here's a couple good pictures. Uh, the standard cut drum, you can see it's a, it's a more open cut. Uh, this is a picture we took on the interstate a few years ago on a heavier, heavier mill and fill. Uh, gives a good pattern, you know, the, it, it's a deeper cut. Uh, the medium fine cut, as you can see, the teeth are much closer together. It's a much tighter pattern. And also it gives, a, I think, a little bit more truer surface, especially for some of our micro, uh, some of our lighter treatment, uh, uh, ultra-thin bondeds and some of our other treatments. For the most part, what we're seeing is the 12 to 18 millimeter drum is still the most common. Um, our heavier mill and fills, uh, some of our full construction projects where the contractors are milling off the pavement instead of ripping it out with an excavator, uh, they're stockpiling that, using it for some maintenance of traffic control uh, material. Uh, we're also using that for our paving contractors to actually implement that back, uh, bring that back into our hot mix asphalts as a, as a wrap item. But for the most part, that 12, and 12 to 18 millimeter cut drum uh, it's for those deeper cuts. We re when we're going to start to mill, you know, five or six inches or more in some cases, especially on a reconstruction project where we're going to pull that pavement off, uh, that standard drum is our best tool is what we've been finding. Um, take, obviously take a bigger cut. It also gets, gets that material into a usable situation uh, for that maintenance traffic control. Generally, that 12 to 18 millimeter cut will fit through a two-inch sieve for the most part, and we can actually use that for a, a good traffic maintenance item on some of our gravels. We also salvage this uh, material. Uh, the department will keep some of this as well, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but we do generate uh, a combination of the 12 and 18 millimeter cut drum uh, stockpiles as well as the 8 to 10. We've increased, like I said earlier, we've increased our, uh, our medium cut drum. The standard cut is an aggressive cut. A lot of road noise, a lot of uh, 
you know, it gives the driver experience a, a lot of a lot of inconsistencies. Um, we've even had some complaints about projects that we've milled that uh, we've had traffic on it for a longer period of time uh, about some tire wear. Um, and the medium cut drum seems to give us a lot better surface prep for not only what we want, but also for the drivers. A uh, lot less drone in the car, a lot less road noise, and also it doesn't give you quite so much of, a, of an aggressive texture uh, to drive on. However, uh, we have seen with the medium cut drums, uh, when we get into a production situation, uh, especially on the interstate with no iron in the road, uh, the speeds will creep up and, uh, and we will get an inconsistent texture with that and we'll also get some ripping into our pavement, uh, similar to a, the 12 to 18 millimeter cut when we crowd that too much. So we're kind of on top of that and, and we've really, really started to migrate towards that medium cut drum at the right speed. For, for the most of our uses. One of our first projects uh, with the medium fine cut drum was in Presque Isle, Mapleton, Route 163 back in 2014. It was an inch and a half mill and overlay. And what the intent was, was to utilize that medium cut drum and to improve our milled surface to pave on top of. Uh, what we did here was we milled an inch and a half uh, we did not use a shim course or a leveling course to take out imp any imperfections. The milled surface with the medium cut drum gave us a platform that we felt comfortable paving that inch and a half directly on top of. It worked really well. Um, we did receive feedback that we didn't get that road noise, we didn't get that aggressive cut from uh, the traveling public. And also, like I said, when we checked our cross slopes, when we checked the uh, the actual surface, it was a much more consistent surface than what we had experienced in the past. Um, and again, we did not use a leveling or a shim course. So we paved the surface right on top of it. Uh, that gave us a lot of good indications that that was a, that was a drum that we wanted to, to invest more time in and, and use more. So in 2016, we created our uh, 202 milling spec for the medium cut drum. And, and essentially what we've done is we've developed a policy where uh, it's on thin lift overlay projects, uh, less than two inches. Uh, we find that that medium cut drum does not cut well after uh, you get beyond that two inch mark. We use it a ton on the interstate, and especially with the 12 foot drums that, that we're seeing on a lot of our mills now. Uh, this is a really good, really good surface for us to put traffic on gives us a great platform to start paving on. And unlike many states, uh, we can mill and keep that traffic, that milled surface unpaved for a period of time. Um, a few years ago when we did the uh, ultra thin bonded on 295 from uh, Gardner to Portland, uh, we had 47 miles of interstate opened up on milled surface and, every, and it was a night job and it was a wet spring and summer. Uh, we milled every night because we could. Raining didn't really stop us. Uh, however, we couldn't pave back in because it continued raining. So we had 46, 47 miles of open milled surface on the interstate and the calls were coming in left and right, up and down. Um, it was a, every day my bureau director visited me and said, when are we gonna pave? When are we gonna pave? And finally, finally they hit the, pa the uh, the media got a hold of it and I was on the uh, 530 live show explaining why we had 47, 47 miles of interstate opened up and why the noise and you know how come we can't pave things back in. Thankfully, the paving gods smiled down on us. We got paving and we got everything buttoned up uh, actually quicker than we thought. We actually had some really good weather to, to pave, pave everything back in. But the medium textured drum, beyond some of that, complaints that we got, if this was the standard cut drum, it would have been much worse. I think that complaint with traffic on uh, the interstate for that amount of time, uh, we would have had a lot more complaints and it would have been from everybody. It wouldn't have been just from commuters. It would have been from the bus services. It would have been from our tractor trailer drivers. Uh, so it really gave us a good platform to, uh, to really learn a lot about that, mild, that uh, medium texture uh, surface. 
The other thing that we noticed too is the, with, especially with the 12-foot drum, uh, we didn't have a matching pass. Sometimes your matching passes with a smaller drum would leave a little bridge. With the 12-foot drum, of course, we're milling that whole lane out in one pass, and that medium cut drum is super consistent with that 12-foot drum. Um, production is up, and uh, Tim mentioned in his presentation this morning, too, about cleanliness. Super important with all of our milled surfaces. And uh, this, this drum, uh, this medium cut drum, actually is a lot easier to clean behind. Uh, the, the depth of the groove, of course, isn't as deep. Um, and I think it cuts a lot better than our old standard cut drum. We also wanted to increase travel speeds. And I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we got our speeds up a little bit. And we started finding that as the technology advanced, you know, we started seeing the 12 foot drums. Uh, we started seeing the speeds improve because we, we could take more of a cut. Um, our old, our old sweet spot was 45 to 60 feet per minute, and then we started seeing it creep up and creep up. We started seeing an inconsistent pattern. We started seeing some of our pavement rip. Uh, some of the pavement actually delammed because it would open up. Uh, you know, the, cut, the cutting teeth weren't doing their job as efficiently because we were, we were pushing that machine too quick. We thought that with the medium cut drum, another benefit of it, we could increase speeds a little bit because we aren't cutting that bigger two inch cut, in which we did. Um, but it, it's been a battle, you know, it's production. Uh, we're out in the travel way of the road. Uh, our customers want us to get in, repair the road and get out. So, you know, if we can mill something in three nights versus five, you know, there's a benefit all the way around. Production for the contractor, benefit for our traveling public and our customers. But the texture, if we crowd it too much, if we push it too much, started giving us an inconsistent and a rougher texture where we saw ripping and we saw a lot of different patterns, especially as teeth wear occurred, um, in which we had to kind of come back, which, you know, is a fight every year one way or another because as the speeds creep up, we see more production, but then we start to see other side effects to that. And even with the, even with the medium cut drum, uh, like I said, on a wide open interstate road or, or like a Route 1 or one of our Route 2s with not a lot of structures in the road, you know, you can really get going. And even with the medium cut drum, uh, we started seeing some inconsistencies. Uh, 90 to 100 feet per minute we were seeing in some applications and it wasn't giving us what we wanted. The benefits that we were seeing from that medium cut drum in the very beginning, we started losing because we were seeing that inconsistencies. We were seeing ripping, um, and we were also seeing that, you know, it just wasn't really the same quality of the milled surface that we really wanted to have. And also the smoothness suffered, because as we would do a truck exchange uh, or, or we would slow down for any structure in the road, that texture would change along with it, and then we'd be right back up to speed. So there would be a noticeable difference as those speeds crept up. We've been using a lot of ultra-thin bonded. You know, you heard Tim talk yesterday a little bit uh, about Maine's uh, ultra-thin bonded. We do use a lot of that every year. And the medium cut drum has made that, uh, made that product uh, in the bonding and everything a lot better than our standard cut drum. Uh, the cleanliness, like I mentioned, you know, that's paramount to, to that bonding process, which we've heard throughout this whole conference. Easier to clean, however, with the 12-foot drum, um, because you, you're milling that 12-foot width, uh, it's, it's a lot tougher to clean up behind it while that 12-foot drum goes up. Normally with an 8 or a 7.5-foot drum, you're cutting a pass and you're setting back. With that 12-foot drum, you never set back. So additional sweepers, vac trucks, things like that, um, really paramount on getting everything clean. And with us, like I mentioned earlier, we're kind of fortunate where we don't have to pave back in every night. So, um, so the traffic will do some cleaning, but really that initial clean is super important to getting us that bond that we need. And also for the department, we use our millings. Uh, we have our own pug mill and we, we use that pug mill um, throughout the state, uh, we've got five regions in the state, and each year a region, uh, most regions will have a pug mill project. 
where we use the aggregate that we generate from our milling um, for those type projects. Uh, not all regions will have a project every year. Uh, we do have a policy on how much we retain and how much we offer to the contractors so they can recycle it through the HMA. Um, and also we have time frame on when these millings want to be used. Uh, we don't want to set on these millings for 10 years. Um, we want to be able to get them, use them, and then replenish when we have a next project. The standard cut drum, of course, it's a larger tooth. Uh, it's a bigger spacing. Uh, generally speaking, we can fit most of that material through a two inch sieve. Um, of course, there's some bigger pieces as our pavement breaks up a little bit differently. But what we found with the medium cut drum is that it's typically a lot, can, lot more consistent for our use at the pug mill. Normally what we do is we will actually have a crushing contractor come in, crush that material so it can fit through a three quarter inch minus uh, sieve and use that in our pug mill. Well, with our standard cut drum millings that we would generate, we would have to crush that material you know, every year. With the medium cut drum, we're finding that that actually has turned into more of a screening process. Most of the millings generated from that medium cut drum we can screen rather than crush. Not saying that there isn't any oversize in there, not saying that you know, we don't put some waste you know, from other projects in there and other contractors you know, add into that stockpile, but we've been finding that the consistency is much better with that medium cut drum. And of course, with us, because our pug mill is our own, we will do a crushing contract, we'll do, we'll do a preparation contract that goes out to bid. Crushing and screening, that previously coarser material uh, added about six to eight dollars of our cost to, to a yard of production. Um, the screening, if we can actually keep that material smaller and cleaner, um, just screening can save us three to four dollars. That's what our experience has been. And also the consistency of the product. You know, we've, I've showed you some of the pictures of the milled surface. Um, that medium cut drum, I think, provides a lot more consistent material for our benefit. Um, it, we certainly have some areas of d lamb. We certainly have some larger pieces that pull up from the paving as we mill through. But I think overall, I think it's a much more consistent uh, material for our use and also the contractor's use. You know, this is a smaller aggregate, uh, screen it, it, might fit one of their sieves, it might not, but I think on both sides it's a much more consistent use. We also will use our material from our full reconstruction projects, which either a contractor will pull off with an excavator, like I mentioned earlier, or that standard cut drum, and we will go through and crush it. Our maintenance crews will actually use a lot of, the, uh, a lot of our stockpiles. Um, for where they will recycle their pavement when they do pipe relocations or um, you know replacements or some shoulder repair and things. So we still we still do have to crush some, but um, it's something that I think with the medium cut drum we've certainly seen it's not uh, it's not as much as a crushing a a a operation rather as a uh, a screening operation. The other thing with the with the medium cut drum for again our purposes is you don't have to have the big equipment. Uh, when we used to have the standard cut drum and a lot of our full construction contractors pulling that pavement up with an excavator, uh, after that pile sits there for a couple of years and we get in there with crushing outfit, you know, that, that pile is hard as rocks, literally. And it takes a big, big excavator in there to break it up, uh, loader in there, and the crushers really, you know, go to work. With that smaller, again, that smaller material, I think it's easier to break up. We don't have to use such big equipment to actually break that pile up. And it's something that, you know, we've learned over the last few years using this medium cut drum and, and the millings that it's generated. Um, and it's, it's actually uh, served a bigger benefit because I think it's opened up some of this to smaller contractors as well that doesn't have some of the larger excavators. We also started using um, the medium cut drum for profiling and milling concrete wearing surfaces on our bridge decks. Uh, this is a picture from uh, 95 in Bangor. Uh, last year, Brian and I went up and spent the night laying out uh, milling uh, on this concrete wearing surface bridge and uh, came in with the, uh, with the medium cut drum and we milled it. Uh, it's not ideal for concrete, but with the slow speed, that medium cut drum did fine. Uh, typically, 
Typically with a concrete application, it would be that micro or that fine cut drum, but the medium cut drum at a low speed did a fantastic job. And what we were doing on this project was the concrete wearing surface was, was getting older. Uh, it, had some, it had some irregularities when it was placed. Um, the ride coming off the joints was, was not the best. So with our paving, uh, paving project, which is an ultra thin bonded project, we decided to go up there and profile mill that bridge deck. And we pulled off three quarters of an inch after we strung it and got our profile and our cross slope the way we wanted it. The guys on the mill did a fantastic job. Everything was clean, uh, cleaned it really well and ultra thinned over the top of it. And the ride that came out of this, uh, night and day difference. Um, not hearing the trucks pound over the joints uh, really made a big difference. We also did a similar thing south of there last year where we milled off um, about two inches of the concrete wearing surface and we placed a SAMI layer and then surfaced over the top of it. And the SAMI layer, basically a liquid membrane. And, uh, and that worked fantastic. But again, the speed of the mill, got to go, you got to do the concrete slow, um, but it did come out very well. We've been finding that our increase for the fine, uh, you know, the medium cut drums, uh, that's been transitioning to our go-to drum, especially with our treatments. Um, we're finding that it's a much better user product for both us to pave on top of and also our traveling public. Um, ride quality with the medium cut drum has been increased by quite a bit. Most of our heavier treatments have a ride spec on them where a contractor will get a bonus or a deduct on the ride. And uh, we find with the medium cut drum, it actually gives us a much better ride for the, for the paving company to pave on top of. So it gives us a, gives us a step ahead to pave and, and uh, it's not quite as coarse and rough. So a couple of things I wanna leave you with today, uh, standard cut versus medium cut. And again, this has been our experience you know, the standard 12 to 18 millimeter space drums. We're using this on a lower, lower speed roadway, deeper cuts. A few years ago on the interstate, we actually did a six inch cut uh, to get rid of an underlying layer that wasn't performing the way we wanted. Uh, definitely use the standard cut drum for that. Um, we were cutting, uh, you know, a good, we were cutting a good charge every night with that 12 foot drum. Uh, with the 12 to 18 millimeter spaced and, and that made a big difference on production. Preparation for other treatments uh, as well. We may do that, uh, may use that standard cut drum. Uh, we may mill off some material before we do an FDR process or a cold in place or a hot in place uh, to both get rid of some of, the, some of the irregularities in the cross slope or profile. Pavement salvage, like I mentioned, we've got our own pug mill. Uh, we'll use that material from, the, from either drum. Uh, on roadways that have had multiple, multiple layers and we can see a lot of DLAM uh, where we are going to mill deeper and we're going to want to use that standard cut. And of course, uh, the speed, you know, with everything, we want to make sure we have the best production, but we want to also want to have that best, pro uh, you know, that best product afterwards. So we have to keep that speed within reason. Uh, for the medium fine, uh, 8 to 10 millimeter, we're using that on, mostly on our higher speeds, ultra thin bonded projects, uh, less than two inches of a mill cut. We may do some uh, where we've got some delamination, uh, but really we're not, we're not going to go searching for the bottom of some of that delam with our medium cut drum. That's when we really need to go back to that heavier cut. Uh, project, uh, again, where we're salvaging some of that material, we've been finding that finer cut material is much more user friendly for us. I was gonna say in my presentation that Brian was gonna make a guest appearance today. This is a little picture he put in the background. He appreciates, uh, appreciates everybody and their efforts on uh, paving preservation and of course uh, wishes he could be here. So thank you very much. Do you use any, we have a provision in, in our specs uh, for the coarse mill versus fine mill is what, what Vermont uses for terminology. Um, so coarse mill, we got to cover up in 14 days and fine mill, we do it in 28. I was just curious if you guys have the same type of similar, similar setup. Ours is 21 uh, on the top end, but with weather, like I said, we got caught on the interstate a couple years ago and, and just, we had two solid weeks, three solid weeks of rain where we just really couldn't get paving. And they're, um, they're different between the, your coarser mill versus the fine, fine mill. Yeah. The finer one, it, we can allow up to 21 days. Okay.
Did you say uh, these are down cutting or up cutting drums? Up cutting drums. Up cutting. Yeah. On any of these projects, have you ever had any experience with using a like a quad wrap drum versus a triple wrap drum to try to address any issues with ride quality and and production rates? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I don't know, Scott. Would you know if we've done that? I don't think we have. Not that I'm aware. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Thanks, it's a great presentation. Do you leave it to, I mean, other than you say in there in that last slide, which is really good summary of when to use and and when, I think if the other term was there, but it was almost kind of like you may use versus you should use, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you leave the contractor discretion in some cases or is it always specified in your contract documents? In our contract documents, we have a medium cut drum spec. So for our milling item, it'll actually be a medium cut drum. Um, we'll have a standard cut drum milling item. So it's paid by the square, it's the same thing, it's just we will, we will actually say we intend to use the medium cut for this item. Now if we did spec out a standard cut drum and you know, throughout a pre-construction project or a pre-paved pro you know, meeting and someone says I really want to use the medium cut, we wouldn't object to that as long as it was the right application. If we were going to cut six inches out, we probably wouldn't, but if the contractor felt that the medium cut drum would be a better application for them, and we wouldn't have any disagreement as long as we felt it was the right application. You, you're specifically, your, your, your state is specifically asking for a particular drum. So what do you, like we have a, um, a texture spec as opposed to, you know, because you can take a standard drum and if you go slow enough, you can get a micro mill surface. So do you see issues where, um, because this particular thing happened to us once where, you know, all of a sudden because they were our people from the main office show up, all of a sudden they start slowing down, you know. We've seen instances where, you know, they may have a, um, a medium cut um, drum, but they're still getting a texture that's more of the rougher texture. So that's why we, instead of going to the whole, you're gonna have an ultra fine or you're gonna have the medium, we specify a texture. Mm -hmm. And there's a, I can't remember what the heck the name of that test is. When we go out, we pour sand on the ground. Patch test. Patch yeah. test. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you have any issues with that? Because again, like I said, it, it seems to us, or as far as I'm concerned, the speed played a major factor as opposed to the drum itself. No, you're absolutely right. The speed is a huge factor on that. Texture wise, you know, we instill in our contractors and also our, our inspectors that are watching the mill uh, process is to make sure that that texture isn't getting out of hand. You know, it isn't ripping, it isn't more open uh, because that speed is increasing. Um, you know, we stay on top of that pretty well. Uh, some of the work that. How do you especially measure? We'll, you know, most of our, barring our ultra-thin bondage, uh, most of our heavier treatments, we're actually using the mill and a combination of mill and shim for cross-slope adjustments too. So we're out there checking a lot, uh, walking behind the mill, checking grade, checking slope to make sure that we're doing what we need to do on that particular roadway. On our ultra-thins, we're walking behind it, we're checking that surface to make sure that we're not seeing DLAM sins of the past, you know, with some rehabilitation projects on the interstate, um, you know, we've seen, we've hit gravel, you know, at an inch on our four foot shoulders, yeah. you know, um, and that's where we start to say, okay, what's going on, you know, um, and so we're right behind it checking and we have that conversation with the contractor. Yeah. Certainly it's subjective. Yeah, that, that, you know, it's New York. It, so I mean, they, it is. you know how that is. The yeah. contractor's always yeah. gonna go, well, I, I'm using your drum, and that is actually what happened. Right. We had a contractor that literally tried to fight. Well, we're using the drum, and the, we, we specified a tooth count. Yeah. Our first time yeah. we did that, we had a we had a specified tooth count with an offset. And hey, we're using the right drum you said to yeah. use. Okay, but holding yeah. now we're gonna change it. We're gonna give you a yeah. a texture spec now. Yeah. Well, so, and most of these jobs, too, have a ride spec attached to them. So, of course, the rougher surface that we create with the mill, yeah. you know, it puts the burden on the paving side to mm -hmm. regain that, pay, you know, regain that ride. And in some cases, 
you can feel that rock, that bad texture coming yeah. up through your pavement as well. Yeah, I mean, well, so, you step out there, you can definitely yeah. see the difference. You know? Yeah. I don't remember our spec in every intimate detail, but I think we have a define how thick between the top of the ridge and the bottom of the ridge. I think we have a right. define, yeah. you know, a set distance. It yeah. can't be more than, you know, an eighth of an inch or half an inch, depending yeah. on what it is. So, yeah. but sand test is a great idea. Are you doing ride quality on the milled surface? And if so, what are you getting for ride numbers on your high speed roads? We're, we're not, um, it's something that we've, we've talked about, but as a, as a matter of course, we haven't been, um, I think we have had the ARAN run over some of our milled surfaces, uh, just in passing, and you know we, we haven't we haven't really used it for anything. Um, it may be something that we want to get into as ride specs increase. We may want to ride the job with the ARAN prior to, during the milling, and then afterwards. But we haven't we haven't jumped into that yet. But the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.